fined by the car park, but you didn't even park your car, then this video might help you. Although it's not legal advice, but it's good guidance. Because if you're new to me, I am Daniel Shensmith, a barrister of England and Wales, and I enjoy helping you to understand law. So please pop that like button and subscribe if you find this content useful. I wouldn't ask otherwise, but it's the only thing I do ask of you. But if you're in this situation, or many of these situations that I'm going to talk about here, this might well be useful for you. I've had lots of questions and comments where people have driven in to a car park and they've either not found a space, they don't like the terms, the spaces are too small, or any sort of other reasons that they don't end up parking, but they end up with a parking charge notice. There's one channel, um, I'll link it if I remember what it is, um, that they drive around in their van, and it's quite a nice little YouTube channel, and they highlighted this one particular car park that was issuing parking charge notices um, just for driving in, even if you drive in, drive round, and drive out again. And that's exactly the scenario I'm covering in this video. And it covers what is the definition of parking. Now, first of all, just as a caveat to what I said at the outset of the video, because I hate being um, inconsistent and incorrect, whilst I did open with being fined, it's not a fine if it's from a private company. It's a parking charge notice. More on that in other videos that I've covered extensively. But the real question for this video is what is the definition of parking? Good question, glad you asked. Well, there is a fairly definitive answer to this that you can apply in a number of different situations, and it's the courtesy of uh, Lord Green in the following case, and it is Ashby and Torhurst. Let's get the um, correct thing here so you can actually see it, rather than a source that's not there. Um, the case of Ashby and Torhurst of 1937. Um, we have this helpful explanation here of what uh, Lord Green uh, said that this meant. He said, you take a car park ticket in order to obtain permission to park your car at a particular place. And parking your car means, I should have thought, leaving your car in the place. If you park your car in the street, you are liable to get into trouble with the police. Bearing in mind this was 1937. Uh, on the other hand, you are entitled to park your car in places indicated by the police or the appropriate authorities for the purpose. Obviously now that includes private parking um, arrangements. Parking your car is leaving your car and, I should have thought, nothing else. So leaving your car in that place. Therefore the reverse of that is if you have not left your car, you've simply examined the terms and conditions or you've tried to park and you can't or the spaces are too small and you don't accept it. Most cars these days are too big for the original sized car parking spaces I'm pleased now to see that many more car parks are giving those double line things. You've probably seen them, probably outside of London, but those double double white lines to allow that little bit more space between parking. Anyway, if the space is too small and you decide not to park and you leave, you have not, in my view, left your car in that place and therefore you shouldn't be getting a parking charge notice. Now, as the caveat to that, this doesn't apply, don't be cheeky, this doesn't apply if you pull up into the car park and decide, I'm just going to nip into the shop for two minutes, no one will mind, because that is parking, because you've left your car there while you nip into the shop. Now, if you go into the shop, even for two minutes and come back, you might only be on the car park for five minutes in total. But the parking charge notice in that sense would be valid if indeed all of the other terms were clear, they were fair and so on. But covering a few of these scenarios, if you drive in and there are no spaces and you drive round and you drive out, then you have not parked in my view and there should not be a parking charge notice. Another scenario is if you drive in, you try to park, as I said the, earlier, the space is too small and therefore you decide this car is just not really safe in this spot here, I'm going to leave. And again, in my view, you have not parked your car. You may have pulled in, you may have examined what, it, what it's like to be parked there, but you haven't actually parked because per the definition here, um, as clear as it ever has been, you've not left your car in that place, and it's still good law. Um, it is. It is still. It's never been um, overruled. It's. Ha it's had either positive or neutral, which means it's either been reaffirmed or there's been no negative uh, adjudication. And this was the Court of Appeal. And so when the Court of Appeal makes comments throughout this on various things, this was actually in respect of something completely different, something to do with theft, I think, but um, by the by. Um, so if you've not left your vehicle, you've not parked your vehicle. But likewise, 
If you are expected to agree or not agree to terms and conditions that are posted on the signs on the car park, you could reasonably be expected to read those signs because otherwise, how can you be held to a term that you've not yet read? So if you pulled your car into a parking space, I'm avoiding the word park, uh, if you pulled your vehicle into a parking space whilst you get out of the vehicle and go and examine the sign to read the terms and think, hmm, do I agree with these terms or not? Are they fair? How much is the parking charge notice if I, um, you know, lapse in my compliance with these terms and conditions? And if the parking charge notice is, let's say, £300, then you might think, well, that's not reasonable. I, you know, if I do go over by a few minutes, I don't want to be held to that then you can get back in your vehicle and leave. Then in my view, again, you haven't accepted the terms and conditions of parking because you've got out, you've read them, you've considered them. If you went to court, said to the judge and outlined this and said, yes, I drove my car in, I found a space, I pulled it in. I thought I will just go and read the terms first before I pay uh, to check whether I agree with the terms of parking and go and read those terms and decided on balance, you didn't accept those terms. So you get back in the vehicle and leave. In that scenario, in my view, a judge is going to accept, well, you considered the terms and you decided not to park there. And so you left. So again, in my view, I'd be arguing strongly that you didn't park and you shouldn't be uh, beholden to this parking charge notice. Now, what about other things such as where the permit is placed? Now, I've done another video where I successfully um, appealed against a parking charge notice and they were very fair about it, to be fair to the company. Uh, they they were very fair and they accepted my arguments as to why I shouldn't. Uh, and my example there was that the parking permit, it was permit only, but the parking permit should be on display. There was no specific wording as to what on display meant. It didn't say on the dashboard, which it wasn't. The wind had blown it onto the seat because the windows were left open from the day before because it was really hot. And... Um, Therefore, the wind had obviously blown it off onto the seat, but it was still visible. So I outlined all this very politely to the company. They were very fair. They just cancelled the charge notice on that occasion. Um, not necessary for an admission of liability. That's just not, you know, I wasn't after that. I was just after cancelling the notice because I did have a permit. And even then on the balance of probabilities, you know, why would I not display the permit? You know, I was displaying it. It had just been blown onto the seat. So it... It just shows that if you are reasonable and fair, and so all of these scenarios, if you've driven in, you've driven around, you've looked at the um, parking spaces, you've re read the terms, you've considered the terms, you're taking time to consider those terms. If all of those things are in place and you just leave, then a parking charge notice should not apply. So those are my views. I hope that is helpful. Uh, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you find this video useful. And as always, thank you for watching.